Mid-America Industrial Park's Living Grand on Grand Lake is made possible by... Hi, my name is Jeremy Culver. I am the Vice President of Ray Corporation, located here in the Mid-American Industrial Park. From the farm kid growing up on a, a, growing up on a farm in Gage, Oklahoma, never would imagine myself sitting here today. Twelve years ago when I first got out of school and was looking, looking to enter the workforce, um, when I thought of industrial, I thought of uh, probably like most people, that just a dirty workplace. You know, after being in the industry for, I guess, going on 15 years now, I've learned that it's anything but that. There's all kinds of opportunities. It's exciting. Talking to high school kids who are, are trying to decide what they want to do when they first got out of high school, I would encourage you to, to come out here in Industrial Park. One, you're going to have an opportunity not only to make more money, but you're going to have the opportunity to have a career. It's been a great opportunity for me and my family. The Mid-American Industrial Park is creating careers and changing lives. Also by... Electricity makes our everyday lives more convenient. We all know it costs more to fill your gas tank, buy prescriptions, and even go to the doctor. In the last decade, gasoline costs rose 11% every year. A dozen eggs increased in cost nearly 8%. Your electricity? It only rose on average less than 5% each year. Your local electric cooperative works hard to keep your electric service safe, affordable, and reliable. Discover the power of your co-op membership. And by... After finishing high school, I immediately got married and started my family. Without a college degree, I found that pretty quickly my options were limited. When I started looking around for a college program for working adults, I quickly found that Rogers State was a great fit. They worked with me to get financial aid, offered classes that fit my busy schedule, and gave me personalized attention that I couldn't get at a larger school. Rogers State definitely started me on my professional career. As well as by... The Grand River Dam Authority is Oklahoma's state-owned electric utility, fully funded by revenues from electric and water sales instead of taxes. GRDA Electricity touches 75 of 77 counties in the state and serves as an economic development engine for all of Oklahoma. At no cost to taxpayers, GRDA also manages 70,000 surface acres of lakes, including Grand Lake, Lake Hudson, and the WR Hallway Reservoir. Annually, the efforts of Team GRDA facilitate over $450 million in economic activity in Oklahoma. And by viewers and members like you. Welcome to Living Grand on Grand Lake, presented by Mid-America Industrial Park. Today we'll show you how to reel in the big one, I mean a really big one, and then we'll eat one of the best burgers on Route 66. Plus we'll meet the man behind the Chronicle of Grand Lake. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. This is, this is Living, living grand, grand on Grand Lake. This is Living Grand on Grand Lake. Hi, I'm Christy Wallace. Thanks for watching Living Grand on Grand Lake, brought to you by Mid-America Industrial Park. So everybody knows that Grand Lake is a fisherman's paradise, and there's no easier way to catch a fish on this lake than with local fishing guide, Tony Coatney. So join us as we hop on Tony's boat and you see how easy it is. He'll bring the rods, the reels, the bait. All you have to do is sit back, relax, and reel in the big one. We was always catfishing. I grew up catfishing, which I don't catfish at all anymore. My grandfather got me into fishing. I've fished all my life, you know. Been down here since, well, I was born in 1965, so I know I was out fishing since 1970 with my grandfather. Uh, you name it, he taught it to me. We ran trot lines, limb lines, and we fished rod and reels for them, but my grandfather was a big cat fisherman. I was fishing tournaments traveling around a lot, doing tournaments and working full time, which you hardly couldn't compete and working. You know, everybody else would be fishing all week when you're at work and it was hard to compete. And a friend of mine asked me to help him on a guide trip one time. 
started doing it and I enjoyed it. I, uh, and I found out there's a way to make a living. So I quit my job. It was right after my father passed away. And I was single and everything else. And I thought, why not? I could quit. I could guide fishing during the summer and go up and guide whitetail in Kansas during the winter. You gotta be good with people. People is the main thing. Uh, kids, I love kids. I don't have any kids myself, but kids are the funnest. It's nothing better than to see a kid catch their first fish and see the smile it puts on their face. But shoot, you wouldn't believe the smiles I get on people that are 75 and 80 years old that's never caught fish. It's just the excitement of seeing them catch fish. You gotta talk to them, you gotta be nice. 99% of the time, people will listen to me what I tell them. It's like when I get a man and a wife in the boat. Usually the woman outfishes the men. And that's because a woman will listen, a man knows it all. So you never know what's gonna happen out there. I mean, I have so many people, I'll have people walk up to me and say, hey, you, or call me. They'll say, you took me about four years ago. Well, I take 300 trips a year here on Grand Lake. I don't remember. Now faces, I remember, but names, sometimes it's tough. But they're, they're all, every, every day's different. You know, some people, their job is the same thing over and over. Everybody asks me, do I get tired of fishing? No, I don't, because it's different every day. You got different people, and they are, a lot of times they always come back. I got a lot of regular customers that are great customers. and been fishing with me for years. We're usually on fish, and it's actually cheaper to hire us than it is to rent a boat, because then you got to find the fish and you gotta have all the equipment. We supply rod, reel, tackle, everything. All you gotta do is show up with a fishing license and go fishing. It's just a great lake. That's why the Bassmasters Classic's coming back again. All of them wanna come back here. Um, it's, it is a good lake. It's a great fishing lake, a good recreational lake. There's a lot to do. Probably 85% of my guiding is for white bass and people just want to catch fish. You know, people talk about going largemouth fishing. Well, largemouth fishing's a lot harder. And people, when they're taking their kids or just first starting out, they want action. And when you can go out and catch 75 to 100 fish in a couple hours, they're what better. And white bass, the way they pull, pound per pound, there's nothing like them besides the smallmouth. So they're, they're fun to catch. You gotta move with them. A lot of people will get stuck thinking, well, we caught them there, we'll catch them there all year. It don't happen that way. It's, they, they move a lot and you just gotta stay with them. I've got people that call me and say, hey, I caught them good over here yesterday, so you might wanna try it. So I do have people call and give me information. So that helps me a lot too, because I've been doing it for 20 years. I'm probably gonna be here forever. Till, till they put me in the ground, I'm gonna be here. I don't know anything else I'd rather do. So not only does he find the fish, he helps you catch the fish, he cleans the fish. You think I could talk him into coming and cooking the fish too? So stay tuned. Next we're going to visit a Route 66 icon and learn about a Grand Lake publisher. You're watching Living Grand on Grand Lake, brought to you by Mid-America Industrial Park. This is Living Grand on Grand Lake. My name is Jeremy Culver. I am the Vice President of Ray Corporation, located here in the Mid-American Industrial Park. From the farm kid growing up, on a, a, growing up on a farm in Gage, Oklahoma, never would imagine myself sitting here today. Twelve years ago when I first got out of school and was looking, looking to enter the workforce, um, when I thought of industrial, I thought of uh, probably like most people, that just a dirty workplace. You know, after being in the industry for, I guess, going on 15 years now, I've learned that it's anything but that. There's all kinds of opportunities. It's exciting. Talking to high school kids who are, are trying to decide what they want to do when they first got out of high school, I would encourage you to, to come out here in the industrial park. One, you're going to have an opportunity not only to make more money, but you're going to have the opportunity to have a career. It's been a great opportunity for me and my family. The Mid-American Industrial Park is creating careers and changing lives.
Hello, our safety tip for today is boating at night. Boating at night brings us many challenges that we don't face during the daytime. The number one thing that I want to talk about is being visible. We have a red and green light on the front of the boat and we have a white light on the rear of the boat. The red and green lights on the front of our boat allows other boaters to see which direction we're going and know how to navigate when they see us at night. The white light in the back, obviously they can see us if they're coming from the rear of the boat, but it also, if we have just a white light on the back of the boat, means that that boat is anchored and that's a different aspect of how we need to face that situation. Another thing to remember is we have to keep those lights running. Keep spare bulbs in the boat, keep, keep things to keep those going like tools or, or spare bulbs. Nighttime navigation is is a learning process and we need to educate ourselves. One way we can do that is GRDA offers boating ed classes. They're required for the kids, but it's a great idea for the adults to come and get involved in that and learn things that we might have overlooked. That's our safety tip for today. Time for the Grand Lake Chronicles events page. Here's what's happening on and around Grand Lake. Jana Jay and the Grand Lake Festivals once again host the American Heritage Music Festival of 2015 in Grove. This event runs from June 11th through the 13th at Snyder's Camp and the Grove Civic Center. This awesome annual Grand Lake event includes the Grand Lake National Fiddle Fest, the Grand Lake National Clogging Contest, with a $1,000 grand prize for each, plus 80 other cash prizes. On June 13th, the Cancer Survivors Crawl will take place in Disney, this rock climbing event is a wonderful event for everyone to see or to participate in. For more information, go online to smartin1050 at sktc.net. Every second and fourth Friday of the month, Prior Cruise Night is held at 6 p.m. in Prior. This Grand Lake event takes place at Pete's Drive-In. For more information, call 918-530-2533. On June 11th, the Grand Lake of the Cherokees Performance Boat Show Shootout comes to the Grove Civic Center in Wolf Creek Park, July 10th and 11th. This radar run speed event is a can't miss on the Grand Lake calendar. For more information, go online to glocshootout.com. Welcome back to Living Grand on Grand Lake. Well, maybe it's the huge neon sign out front. Or maybe it's the fact that it's the last remaining cuckoo stand in the U.S. Or maybe you're just a local and you know where to get the very best hamburger. No matter what the reason, when you visit Wayland's Cuckoo Burger on Route 66, you'll be glad you came. Yeah, I started cooking hamburgers back in 1961. I just got out of high school and just looking for a job. And that was when a lot of the fast food just came out with the 15 cent hamburgers. <laughs> and uh, so I was cooking 15 cent hamburgers in 1961 and uh, been doing the hamburgers all along. You know, I grew up on a farm boy in Kansas, and when I went to work for the companies of the hamburgers, I did some traveling a little bit. I went to Texas and to Tennessee, and then I was able to get back to Oklahoma, basically try to get closer to home with my parents, and it was a good opportunity to buy a business. I wanted to buy my own business here. I've owned this now for 42 years and made a good time, good life for me in Miami. I started this, uh, I've been here 42 years now. And uh, of course, when I first come, I was, uh, I had uh, three little kids. One was in kindergarten, one was in second grade, and one was in fourth grade. And I didn't have no money at all. And the banker downtown helped me. He said, whatever you need, Gene, I'll help you get going. Well, Cuckoo was a chain, and of course, the building made like that with the birds still up there on top there, and the clock, and the cuckoo, the cuckoo clock worked, and the cuckoo bird cuckooed. This one was built in 1965, but I didn't come and buy it until 1973. Basically, what happened uh, in 65 to, to 73 was that the companies grew and they sold out, and then they cooked, quit running it for the people that had the money invested. I'm getting uh, a lot of foreign trade. Jap Japanese, uh, Switzerland, Australia, Brazil. There's all these companies, countries 
are traveling to Route 66. Just being Route 66 out front here has really helped me on all this stuff. And so I don't want to change a lot. I've changed some menu items to have a few special menu items like a Western burger, a brisket sandwich, or I've got the different things, side orders, yellow squash, and uh, stuff like that, the okra that we didn't used to have. All be when it first started, all there was was hamburger, fry, and drink, and add a shake. <laughs> and then we added onion rings, and you know, we added a little bit more. But I've made some uh, changes with the menu. Oh, a great burger is good meat, good buns, you know, original stuff, not just uh, fake stuff that you get out and then just uh, cook it right. I've had people come through the drive up window and buy a burger, and then be later tell me, he says, I knew you fixed my burger because I could taste it. And how I can, I, I can't do all the cooking myself, so I got some helpers, but uh, they tell me they can tell when I fix their burger. I've uh, got a, two, three fair lanes. I keep two parked out front here. One's getting painted right now. It's a light blue. That was my first original new car. That was the first time I got a new car in 1967. And I had my three kids drive it. And they, of course, they had to put a new door on it, a new fender on it. But I've kept it and got it back and kind of keeping it original. And they, and they sit out front here, and I have a lot of people come by. And I have some of the truckers, too, they say, oh, you're at that place where those cars are sitting out front. And uh, that's uh, worked into the cruise night. The lot next door to me here I use for the, and we just uh, have it some, sometimes between 30 and 100 cars through the summer months, April through September. It's the fourth Saturday of each month. And we uh, just meet out there and I give them pop and sometimes I give them hot dogs. And summer, uh, September I give them chili. I make them three or four big pots of chili to give them to them. And uh, just to enjoy that matter of people come to town. The community was behind me to start with, so I just feel great that uh, I can give back to the community what uh, they helped me get and, and raise my kids and the grandkids and the great grandkids now. This is Living Grand on Grand Lake. This is Living Grand on Grand Lake. Grand River Dam Authority is Oklahoma's state-owned electric utility, fully funded by revenues from electric and water sales instead of taxes. GRDA Electricity touches 75 of the 77 counties in the state and serves as an economic development engine for all of Oklahoma. At no cost to taxpayers, GRDA also manages 70,000 surface acres of lakes, including Grand Lake, Lake Hudson, and the WR Hallway Reservoir. Annually, the efforts of Team GRDA facilitate over $450 million in economic activity in Oklahoma. You two look happy. Is there anything else I can get for you? Okay. Cherokee Casino and Hotel, West Siloam Springs. The feeling stays with you. Thanks for staying tuned to Living Grand on Grand Lake, or as Brian Ruth of the Chronicle of Grand Lake would say, welcome back, Lake Rockers. If you know Brian, then you know nobody loves this lake like Brian. Stay tuned as we watch what drew Brian and his family to Grand Lake and why he loves writing about this lake. I did not grow up in this area. Um, I did as a kid uh, grow up camping and fishing, and we always had a trailer at the lake in Ohio. I was running a printing company over in Nowata, Oklahoma, and my maintenance man was a big fisherman. And uh, whenever he'd see too many stress lines on my forehead, he'd say, hey, Brian, I need to get you over to the lake. Let's go fishing. So we would, uh, we would come over from Nowata, Oklahoma, here to Southwinds Marina in Bernice, and we would put in right over there on that ramp. And uh, my first introduction to Grand Lake was in a bass boat just like this, right here in Horse Creek. I was introduced to the Chronicle uh, because I was the printer. I printed the publication in No Water. There's a big printing plant still in operation over there right now. And uh, I was a printer and the 
Grand, the Chronicle of Grand Lake was my customer. And uh, we would come over and go and get involved in golf tournaments and, and things uh, with the chamber. And uh, one thing led to another, and uh, my dealings with the previous owner were, were very fair. And uh, he shared with me at, uh, in the summer of 2004 that of all the people that he had done business with, that I had uh, treated him the best and that, that I was the fairest, and he could see that I had passion for Grand Lake. And uh, one thing led to another, and uh, he was ready to retire. It had always been a dream of mine. I've been in the newspaper business my whole life. Uh, we had a, a lot of ceremonies and things when Rusty retired, and there was uh, folks always saying, well, you've got some big shoes to fill. And I never looked at it like that. I looked at it as though I wasn't filling Rusty's shoes, but I was carrying on the flame. I was carrying the torch. And what really attracted us to the Chronicle to invest what we did, our, basically invested our lives into being a part of the Chronicle, is it's a, it's a publication that has been guided and directed by its readers and its advertisers. That core information, the, the news that's in the Good News newspaper is all about Grand Lake. And it's all about the, the great opportunity for fun that's here. The most compelling, interesting thing uh, for me is the stories of the people we get to meet and how they found their way to Grand Lake. A lot of them will start out with my grandparents had a place, my, you know, my folks had a place. Back when the old Shangri-La was there, a lot of professional people found their way to Grand Lake through conventions and things like that. We have a pretty good fleet of fast boats here at Grand Lake uh, also. Um, and the big, the big poker runs, when them big skaters get out here and run up and down the lake 200 miles an hour, it's hard not to, to get excited about that. Uh, probably the biggest oh my gosh event still is the Duck Creek Fireworks. You know, it's one of the biggest in the Midwest. Uh, we have one of the best pyrotechnic companies in the world that produces it. Um, and we raise the money ourselves. It's all through donations. Every year Grand Lake comes together and we, uh, we raise over $100,000 and put on a $100,000 show. One thing that, uh, that we have tried to maintain at the Chronicle ever since uh, me and my wife took over the Chronicle in 04 uh, is that Grand Lake is available to everybody. And I happened to find my way to Grand Lake on the deck of a bass boat. We're just blessed to be right in the middle of it. You know, it, it does get a little overwhelming at times. There just seems that there's more things to do than we have time to do them in. But uh, luckily, we can do multiple seasons and finally get them all under our belt. I couldn't paint a picture that was any better than, than the job I have right now. I mean, I think everything that I did my whole life leading up to this point was in preparation for this. As you can see, Brian Ruth's love of this lake is contagious. And in fact, you can see for yourself, next time you're at the lake, pick up a Chronicle. We've had a lot of fun on today's show. I'm glad you could join us. You know, you can catch us anytime at rsu.tv or tune in next week for Mid-America Industrial Parks Living Grand on Grand Lake. And we'll see you later. Mid-America's Industrial Parks Living Grand on Grand Lake is made possible by Hi, my name is Jeremy Colbert. I am the Vice President of Ray Corporation, located here in the Mid-American Industrial Park. From the farm kid growing up on a, a growing up on a farm in Gage, Oklahoma, never would imagine myself sitting here today. Twelve years ago when I first got out of school and was looking looking to enter the workforce. Um, when I thought of industrial, I thought of uh, probably like most people that just a dirty workplace. You know, after being in the industry for I guess going on 15 years now, I've learned that it's anything but that. There's all kinds of opportunities. It's exciting. Talking to high school kids who are 
or trying to decide what they want to do when they first got out of high school. I would encourage you to, to come out here in Industrial Park. One, you're going to have an opportunity not only to make more money, but you're going to have the opportunity to have a career. It's been a great opportunity for me and my family. The Mid-American Industrial Park is creating careers and changing lives. Also by... After finishing high school, I immediately got married and started my family. Without a college degree, I found that pretty quickly my options were limited. When I started looking around for a college program for working adults, I quickly found that Rogers State was a great fit. They worked with me to get financial aid, offered classes that fit my busy schedule, and gave me personalized attention that I couldn't get at a larger school. Rogers State definitely started me on my professional career. Plus by... Grand River Dam Authority is Oklahoma's state-owned electric utility, fully funded by revenues from electric and water sales instead of taxes. GRDA Electricity touches 75 of 77 counties in the state and serves as an economic development engine for all of Oklahoma. At no cost to taxpayers, GRDA also manages 70,000 surface acres of lakes, including Grand Lake, Lake Hudson, and the WR Hallway Reservoir. Annually, the efforts of Team GRDA facilitate over $450 million in economic activity in Oklahoma and by viewers and members like you. 